this game is shit. <laughs> Let's not kid ourselves. Skyrim is one of the greatest RPGs of the modern era. Yeah, this game has been re-released by Bethesda about 18 million times, but that's because this game series is hard to outmatch with their player agency and world design. You can be whoever you want and do whatever you want to do. Or can you? My first experience with the Elder Scrolls series was with Oblivion, and while that's fairly late into the series, it's not difficult to see that a lot of the RPG mechanics have been watered down in the latest installments in the series. Some people in the RPG circle won't even classify Skyrim as an RPG because it lacks so many elements that incentivize roleplaying. A large percentage of these people have earned the prestigious title of Moral Boomer. Every Skyrim player just cowered in fear from that word, or at least they would have if they weren't busy whacking off to their hundreds of sex mods they installed on their Alienware gaming laptop. You see, the Elder Scrolls fanbase is vast and diverse. You have the Sky Babies, who love the exploration and world design of Skyrim while simping for a whiny vampire and crouching in a corner as their 30th stealth archer. You have the Oblivitards, who enjoyed the very well-written quests of Oblivion if they're not making the most horrid fucking character you've ever seen in your life. And then you have the aforementioned Moral Boomers, the dreaded gatekeepers of the series. These avid fans enjoy the deep RPG mechanics and lore of Morrowind while relentlessly shitting on Skyrim players. They're probably on their way to dislike this video right now just for calling them Moro Boomers, but it's gonna take them a while because they're still trying to run the Balmora with their abysmal run speed. So there you have it, Oblivion and Skyrim for the kiddies, and Morrowind for the hardcore Giga Chat. But little do they know, there's a fourth horse in this race, cowboys. An Elder Scrolls game so hardcore that even the most dedicated Morrowind players drop their Kwama eggs and soil themselves upon hearing the title. The Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall. The Elder Scrolls series has been the butt of countless jokes and memes since Morrowind hit the shelves, and it really isn't difficult to see why. If you're new to the series and you see this... Oh, Hello! Brawl. What's going on with you? I ran into some goblins in the woods not long ago. Nasty little beasts. I avoid those things whenever I can. Then you're likely not thinking of these games as very in-depth RPGs. Oblivion gets a bad rep for its cartoonish character design and really weird NPC conversations, but NPCs having their own schedule and doing things outside of the player's presence was a rare thing to see in games at this time. Oblivion added a lot of new gameplay mechanics that were later cemented into the series with Skyrim, but it also took out a lot of elements that were in the previous entries of the series. And now that The Elder Scrolls is making a splash in the mainstream gaming circle, it dumbed down a lot of its design to a more casual, friendly gameplay loop. Players didn't have to worry about asking for directions or looking around and writing down information on paper like you had to do in the olden days. You got the quest from the NPC, you traveled to some unexplored town you've never seen in your life, you followed this red marker while occasionally looking up to, you know, enjoy the fucking game world that took thousands of hours to craft, complete the objective, and move on to the next quest where you do the same thing. Now don't get me wrong, I love Oblivion's quests. They're arguably some of the best quests in the series. But this casual approach to questing ended up getting turned up to 11 in Skyrim to the point where quest objectives didn't even matter anymore. While many players enjoy this approach to quest design, it simply isn't what The Elder Scrolls used to be, for better or for worse. For me personally, I loved the lack of hand-holding as seen in Morrowind. Having to ask NPCs for directions and sometimes not getting concise directions made your journey much more believable. Yeah, these guys are racist slave owners who ride around on fucking isopod things to get around. They're probably not going to know the exact coordinates of the guy you're supposed to be lawfully assassinating. This lack of hand-holding isn't exclusive to Morrowind, though, as it was present in the earlier two entries of the series, Arena and Daggerfall. So once I found out that there exists a version of Daggerfall that's been ported to the Unity engine, I knew I had to jump on and give it a try. The base game of Daggerfall is free to everyone. You can get it on Bethesda's website, you can get it on Steam, 
but this is a hard recommend. You see, you have to run this game on an emulation of MS-DOS. It is also an Elder Scrolls game, so it is fucking riddled with bugs. And due to it being an emulation, it makes modding way more difficult. The Unity version of Daggerfall offers way more flexibility in its optimization, it runs a lot better, and it has mod support, which is fucking fantastic. So thank you to Interkarma for opening this game up to a much wider audience and making the game a lot more modern and accessible. With all that said, let's see what the hubbub is about. What first stuck out to me is how deep the character customization is. This is one of the only games in the series where you don't start out as a prisoner, so you're given a lot more freedom in developing your character's backstory and skill set. Modern Elder Scrolls fans will be surprised at the large amount of skills available compared to Skyrim. Some familiar, and others being unique to Daggerfall like climbing, and a handful of language skills that let you pacify the various creatures of High Rock. You can even take a questionnaire to further flesh out your backstory to give you a small boost to the start of your game. You can also apply special advantages and disadvantages to your character. Some of them are fairly basic, like having expertise in a bow to get an increase to damage, and being weak to certain statuses, but you can make this super deep by banning specific armor and weapon types. My first character was a hardcore dungeon crawler, who has an immunity to disease after spending so much time raiding dank crypts, but lacks the ability to use any magic. That means no mark and recall spells to get myself out of dungeons quickly, and no access to the mages guild, locking me out of special services like buying magic items and teleportation for quick travel. Due to this being a huge disadvantage, I gained a huge increase to my XP gains and was soaring through levels like crazy. The fact that you get this much flexibility out of character creation without any mods is baffling, and it only makes me want to create more characters with wacky conditions like this. So after taking 30 minutes to make my character, I started the game and was immediately hit in the face with the charm of Daggerfall. I don't know if this was because I played RuneScape 2 in the Putt-Putt games growing up, but old computer games like this really make me feel a certain way. Hearing those crunchy sound effects and listening to the buzz of those old MIDI synthesizers brings me back to a portion of my childhood where I was fixated on exploration and wonder. You have those pixely sprites that follow your camera position. It really makes for a unique art style. I think Privateer's Hold is a great example of a starting dungeon as you can learn the basics of the game without having to read any text tutorials. By just playing the dungeons, players learn the complexities of the dungeon, looting enemies, confronting a locked door and either picking the lock or bashing it open, skipping parts of the dungeon by climbing over the wall, and one of the most important parts of any RPG that was a huge point of contention for Morrowind, and that is... Players who are familiar with Morrowind will be right at home with Daggerfall's combat system, but any modern Elder Scrolls fan will be instantly taken back by it. When you swing your weapon, the game rolls a chance for you to hit your opponent that's based on various factors like stats, armor, weapon, etc. Translation. You swing your sword at a rat and watch as it phases through their body while they slowly nibble you to death. Welcome to Daggerfall, bitch. In all seriousness, the chance-based combat isn't really that much of an issue in Daggerfall. I mean, in the original version of the game, you had to click and hold the mouse button while you swung your 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 mouse so your sword will swing in that direction. Daggerfall players were just swinging their fucking trackball mice around like they were competing in ESL Pro. Thankfully, the Unity version of Daggerfall includes a one-click attack button so you can save yourself from your impending carpal tunnel. It's possible to install a mod that changes the combat into something more like Oblivion and Skyrim, but I don't really recommend this as it completely messes with the balance of the game. Once you gain more experience with your weapon, it really doesn't become much of an issue with missing your target, and your target has a chance to miss you, so it's not like you're at a big disadvantage if you miss your swings. Daggerfall also one-ups Morrowind by adding a little sound effect whenever you miss your attack. I like to imagine having this really epic choreographed sword fight with swords fucking clashing left and right. You can even increase your odds of survival by maneuvering away from your opponent when they're about to swing. As I progressed through my playthrough of Daggerfall, I found myself memorizing enemies' attack patterns and using every tool I had at my disposal to increase my chances of survival. With the lack of conventional difficulty settings, it made me take every encounter seriously and relate to the players who also overcame those same encounters. It made me appreciate the numerous tips I received from other players about the game and- w wait, 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 wait. 
This is an Elder Scrolls game we're talking about. A game series that's synonymous with spamming left click until your opponent's hit points run out before yours do. A game series where a fatal stab wound is instantly remedied by eating 19 cheese wheels. A game series where you don't even have to engage in combat because you can crouch with a bow and get- Is someone there? Must have been the wind. It's incredibly refreshing to see difficulty in an Elder Scrolls game, but it's not just the combat that's difficult in Daggerfall. As stated in the intro to this video, Daggerfall is one unforgiving son of a bitch. Every Elder Scrolls game after Daggerfall added difficulty sliders, which do nothing to change the difficulty other than making your opponents hit harder and making you hit softer. Artificial difficulty, a half-assed method of making video game difficulty that annoys every gamer except for whiny video game journalists. Some games have it, others don't. Whether or not they should have it is a whole other can of worms, but my point is, Daggerfall doesn't have that. The only thing close to a difficulty slider is being able to change the game reflexes, which doesn't really do anything other than changes the attack frequency of the enemies as well as their movement speed. You're going to get stomped by this game, and it was intended to do so. I'm going to take some time to press F for all of my fellow Daggerfall players who are stricken with PTSD after hearing this sound. I still shit myself after hearing this sound. These skeletons will absolutely fuck you up on your first playthrough. Going back to when I was talking about how Privateer's Hold was a great starting area, it teaches you that not every enemy can be utterly annihilated right off the gate. Hell, there's even an imp that spawns right next to the start of the dungeon that is immune to iron weapon, which are the weapons you start with. Not every enemy has to be fought, and not every encounter has to be completed. It's up to you to make those hard decisions in order to prolong your survival. As soon as you exit Privateer's Hold, the world completely completely opens up to you. No main quest objectives, no directions, just you and the massive world of High Rock. You'll see that fast traveling is present in this game, which is what I praised Morrowind for not having, but you're gonna need it in this game because the game world is as big as a literal fucking island of Great Britain. So what do you do? Well, for starters, you can go to the city of Gothway Garden and sell your loot, or you can join the various factions. All of the factions you're familiar with are in this game, as well as the Thieves Guild and Dark Brotherhood, which are fairly elusive. Not only that, but most cities have temples dedicated to the various gods of Tamriel that also serve as factions. You heard that right. It's role-playing time, baby. Maybe you want to start your game as a Vigilant of Stendar, a paladin who wishes to join the temple to further his devotion to the God of Mercy. You saw them walking around in Skyrim and thought it would be cool to join them on their mission trips, but ended up getting disappointed that you couldn't join their ranks. Well look no more. In Daggerfall, not only do you get standard access to temple services like curing your diseases and buying discount potions, but you also get quests that pertain to your temple and a permanent buff that gives you a chance to escape death. Maybe you want to become a lowly cat burglar, busting into people's houses to take their shit and escaping the guards by climbing the rooftops and jumping into the night. Hold! Hold! Maybe you don't want to fight anything at all and play the merchant game. Walk into some old dusty shithole of a pawn shop, buy all of their items, take it somewhere else, and sell it for hire to gain that sweet capital. Take that gold and deposit it in your bank account, which you can also use to take out loans to buy houses and ships. Buy a horse that you can use to increase your traveling speed, and trample every fucking NPC in the town like you're playing Grand Theft Auto. In this game, you can truly be whoever you want and do whatever you want to do. Tuck in your shirt to gussy yourself up before meeting Queen Baron Zaya. Drape your cloak over one or both of your shoulders, and put your hood up to shield yourself from the rain. The amount of control you have over your character's style and lifestyle is absolutely bonkers. So once you get your character built up and you join one of the many available factions, you're probably going to start engaging in some of Daggerfall's quests. The side quests in Daggerfall are admittedly not great. You see, a large majority of this game is procedurally generated. A lot of the cities look the same, a lot of the NPCs look familiar, and the dungeons. Oh my god, the dungeons. Anyone who uses Daggerfall Unity should know that there's an optional setting that makes the dungeons a lot smaller, and this is the biggest recommendation I can give to anyone who wants to jump into this game. The dungeons aren't just big, they're fucking gargantuan. Without this setting turned on, it could easily take 5 to even 8 hours trying to get through a single dungeon. And that's if you get lucky to find your objective inside the dungeon, 
Other times, it'll be hidden behind a secret wall or something you have to interact with to teleport to a different section of the dungeon. It's awful. Due to these dungeons being procedurally generated, that means your quests are going to be procedurally generated too. So they're not very diverse in their objectives. This is where the magic of modding comes in. I played Daggerfall Unity with the small dungeon setting turned on and this quest pack that I installed from the Nexus. This mod makes the game a lot more immersive by adding in a ton of quests that involve skill checks that you would see in games like New Vegas, and it really makes for a more interesting game world. So if you want any of the experiences that I'm about to talk about, install this mod. My first quest with the Fighters Guild wasn't actually from the quest mod and was a classic with the series. Go to an NPC's house and exterminate a pest infestation. Simple enough, right? Problem is, there are hundreds of houses in the city, and with no quest markers directing me to the right house, I was completely left in the dark. Well, surely a local tavern owner might know the ins and outs of the city and might be able to point me in the right direction. Well, he could, but he wasn't in the mood to actually tell me. So I found myself asking the locals where I could possibly find this household. Some simply didn't know, others were rude, some of them were fucking racist, and after spending 10 minutes talking to strangers, I finally managed to get lucky when this kind soul marked the location of the house on my map. I find the house, take care of the infestation, and make it back to the Fighters Guild to collect my pay. Right after collecting my payment, I chat with another guild member who wants me to fiddle around with an old amulet he found. The amulet malfunctions and teleports me to the middle of a dungeon. With no knowledge on the whereabouts of the exit and enemies closing in, I had no other choice but to fight my way out. It's all good though, as he made sure to compensate me for the trouble with the whopping price of 300 gold pieces. The most memorable job I took from the Fighters Guild involved rescuing an abducted child. I went to the dungeon, cleared it out, and found the little girl that was being ransomed to a family of nobility. After rescuing the girl, I was given the option to teach her how to use a sword in case things got hairy. As my character was a skilled swordsman, I passed the skill check with flying colors. We exited the dungeon and were immediately accosted by two bandits. Little do they know, I have a little witcher at my side now. She sneak attacks one of the bandits and they run away, saving me from a potentially fatal combat encounter. The girl gets home to her family nice and safe, the end. I'm really glad I installed this quest pack as it turns these jobs from meaningless fetch quests to little adventures, and combined with the abundance of RPG mechanics, it only adds to the charm of this game. So yeah, I think that's about it. I wasn't able to finish the main quest yet, but it's interesting enough to keep me playing, and it's a lot different than the kill evil guy X that you see in a lot of the more recent Bethesda games. All in all, I think this game is a great experience for those who think that Bethesda has taken the RP out of their genes. Todd Howard said in a recent interview that Starfield was expecting to have more hardcore elements that harken back to their previous RPGs, and I really hope this turns out to be true. If they can make an RPG with Daggerfall's life sim elements, and more modern graphics akin to a heavily modded Skyrim, then that could very well be one of the best RPGs we will ever see. I'm sure most Elder Scrolls fans will probably pass on this game, even though it has everything a Skyrim player likes, like fast traveling, player build diversity, titties. But if you're willing to use a bit of imagination and you're not wanting to install 80 different mods to get these RPG mechanics in Skyrim, then I'd say fire this game up and give it a try. It is free, after all. In the meantime, I'm going to be seeking therapy after all those undead experiences. <laughs>